Yeah. You are listening to the Foamy Heads Podcast, where we discuss craft beer and anything else that accompanies a glass. Mitch and Rich are back on the Foamy Heads. Welcome to another episode. Mitch, you've already poured your beer, dude. What's going on over there? Hey, I wanted to do something during the intro music. So. All right, hey. fuck it. <laughs> Get it some of a, that. Oh, that right. sounded good from a distance. Man. Yeah, I like it. That sounds... Oh, shit. It's starting to pour over. Um, we got three more cans. Fun night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, bringing in our guests here in just a minute. This is their fault. We're going to be drinking too much beer tonight, and I'm not mad about it, but... Um, Mitch, it's good, good to be back to on. Yes, I'm excited. This is uh, this is a really good time. We've we've been talking with them, these guys, for uh, on and off for quite some time, but we've known them for quite a while. For longtime listeners, you're definitely going to remember our guest. Um, but we're bringing her back around tonight, and uh, she's got a partner in crime with her too. So we're really excited. We've got Creature Comforts in the building tonight. We've got Michelle and Asa. They're hanging out all the way down in the athens georgia tap room so they're uh, quite a ways away what's going on guys what's up y'all hello thanks for super having excited it's yeah absolutely <laughs> tell us kind of tell us because we're on video right now tell us a little bit what's going on behind us you guys are sitting in the tap room in athens right now so yeah we are uh, at our uh first facility uh, named snow tire um, we named it for uh, the family that op- owned and operated it since the 50s. It was a Michelin Tire Factory, so we named it the Snow Tire Facility, but it was the original facility that we started off with. We're actually in the cellar room right now that is still being used and still active. Uh, just a little quiet because the tap room, of course, there's a lot of people enjoying our beers right now. So, um, Plus, this is kind of a cool little behind the scenes for you guys to get to see a little bit. I'm digging it. It sounds great too. I'm not picking up on anything like noise wise okay. in the background. Mitt. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. There, huh? we, yeah. are, we kind of failed on the headphones. Downtown <laughs> Athens is there's a bunch of places piled on top of each other, so we share <laughs> walls with other bars. So, but it's all it's all good. Sweet, and and Athens is kind of you guys' bread and butter. But I mean, you guys have started expanding in the area too, and and I think this is where we kind of start talking a little bit about you guys' background, right, Mitch? I mean talking yeah. about the the whole like coming to creature comforts and, and bringing it to nashville because that's where we're based originally even though you guys are in the uh the athens tap room there but you know michelle you you had talked about bringing creature comforts to the nashville area and and aza definitely helping out with uh, the chattanooga area too so tell us a little bit about that background so yeah um so creature had uh just celebrated its 10-year anniversary as a brewery but around uh year nine uh you know we felt that it was the appropriate time to look outside of the georgia market we were dominating here and um we just were like you know what are some other great places that we could try and see about expanding and uh nashville and tennessee was one of those so um kind of came on board uh I believe we started draft only around June time of 2022. June two. Yep. And uh, stayed draft only, kind of built the hype around. Uh, and then about, you know, six, seven months later, uh, helped launch package here. That's about the time that I jumped into joining the team. Uh, draft was already kind of being sold here. But um, as soon as I saw there was a job posting, I was like, yes, I would love to yeah. work for you guys. Been a big fan. So, um, <clears throat> We have now actually officially have just rounded out all of Tennessee. Uh, Knoxville came on board around August of 2023. Uh, and we just recently, within the past month, launched uh, Memphis. So um, Memphis did a little bit of draft only, and then they're finally uh, rolling out package there uh, right before Memorial Holiday. So, And it's doing actually really well. So um, we love it. We also went into South Carolina, uh, so we expanded that whole entire state as well. But those are the only states that we're going to stay in right now. Uh, sustainability and freshness is really important to us. Uh, and so these are kind of our baby steps to perfect the system and to ensure the quality of the beer is not compromised as we continue to grow. And, you know, who knows? 
maybe there'll be some more southeastern or worldwide domination coming from us. <laughs> That's why oh yeah. <laughs> So we got the we got the tasting room in Los Angeles too, and mm-hmm. they're distributing, from what I understand, a little bit within the city. But I mean, that's a whole other monster and mm-hmm. baby steps. It's just like how this place was before. We could do on a package day like twelve pallets, I think, in a day, twelve, fourteen pallets. Now at the new facility, which was built after about year four, I think, um, they can do forty something pallets in a day. So that's two whole truckloads. So it's it's definitely grown and hopefully california can, can find that too uh yeah. but, uh we kind of had uh modeled our i mean I, I i wasn't sitting in the business meetings but i always heard the influence was from new glarus uh, mm-hmm. out of wisconsin where they're brewing like i from what i understand almost a hundred thousand barrels which is honestly more than what we brew uh, of like one brand and i might be making that up but from what i understand spotted cow and it's a ball mm-hmm. say so i'm like it it was such a hit and they only uh, distributed within Wisconsin. Now they've extended to some uh, other markets, not many from what I understand, but they were only in Wisconsin for a huge part of their like beginning, like for almost maybe over a decade. And so we kind of wanted to keep it still and steady, like, like Michelle mentioned for quality sakes, like we really care about quality uh, and making sure that the experience is proper. So mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, I know the sustainability piece is big um, yeah. <clears throat> with Creature Comforts, trying to see, you know, reduce the amount of water that you guys have to spend in order to make a six pack of beer or, you know, and that's just, that's one of you guys' missions. It is a little odd to me that you guys are going from like Athens, Georgia, and then launching Memphis and, and Nashville and like the Southeast region. And then you've got something way over here in LA. It's a crazy you know, story. Oh, uh, <laughs> don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that story whenever we okay. discuss another one of these beers because it will sound right. good. sense. Sounds good. <laughs> that, being, that sounds like a great one. Mitch, do we want to jump into the first one? Yeah. We've got, got a right, we so we get our boy beat. on top. Beebs. So this was a, this was one of the original core beers, uh, German Pilsner called Bebo, and uh, it gets its uh, very uh, specific name from a, a parrot um, that was Albert Einstein's pet parrot. It was oh. a gift given to him by someone in the medical school. Oh, I, I honestly can't. I don't know the details other than that he had a pet parrot <laughs> named Bebo, and Bebo is also Latin for I drink. Um, so very fitting in a lot of ways. Nice. Nice. So again, very unusual name. And I got to do a shout out just because this is awesome. Russian river, uh, has a great Pilsner called Pivo and we just did a collab with them and it's called Pivo. <laughs> because of course it is. Why would it? My, my, my mind's else. getting blown right now. So yeah. I love I didn't know. I didn't know this. More unusual beer names, but and <laughs> I don't know the river. Pivo, but it's a great that's, beer if you haven't had it. That's awesome. Bebo, Pivo, and Bebo. Yeah. Pivo. <laughs> Pivo, Bebo, nice. and Vivo. That makes sense, Mitch. You're. I know you're a Pilsner Crispy Boy fan. This one tastes yeah. really good to me. I haven't always been a Pilsner guy. Uh, I think it's that funny was that you, you just that said that, Rich, because when I was listening to our episode, we went on that tangent about how Mitch has been getting you more into the Pilsners. So <laughs> glad to changed. see that it has grown on you in the three yep. years since it's been since I last talked to you all. But so yeah, um, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Are we uh, we still do the sniff and all that kind of stuff. So all of it. We yeah. should, but, <laughs> but we can dive I'm into. Excited to drink it. Yeah. yeah, go in, dig in. Oh, mm. Hopefully, you mm. shouldn't get any sulfur from the, the aroma. It should be clean. Uh, pure German. I mean, it's a German Pilsner in the sense that uh, it's got a kiss of hop flavor to it. It's all hot side. It's not dry hopped. Um, and it's all German hops. From what I understand, it's Huel Millen, Sterling, and, and Saw. So. Mm. Um, Hey, so you're speaking uh, from a, it's got a brewery case of hops, background. But it's different hops than we're used to, especially in the southeast, with usually like very fruit forward, like hop flavors. You get mm. a whole different volume with this. So. Yeah. Well, what's your background? You're kind of speaking a little bit from a brewery standpoint, like you like you know a little. Well, luckily, about the brewery beer. is great about educating. Uh, I used to work production, so I started uh, in the tasting room. Uh, right. <clears throat> so I've got a fun story from fanboy to full time where I was actually coming a lot the first year when they opened up 
uh, they would do a thing every Tuesday called Curious Tuesdays where they would hmm. treat Athena on some, certain fruits or reclaimed rye, the, the rye amber that I was speaking of before, like they would put chai tea in it or it was all, it was just something experimental. Uh, one of our biggest core values and I think our motto is create curiosity. Mm-hmm. And so we were pushing the boundaries, I guess, and doing fun things on number on Tuesday. So I would come all the time. I made friends with a lot of the, of the, the tasting room staff, I had a friend that worked here. He told the manager I wanted a job. I never told him that. <laughs> Got an interview set up, started working here in the tasting room. When they started packaging, I started packaging. Uh, um, they had a packaging team. I eventually joined the snow tire packaging team. And uh, after Tropicalia sales were going, were growing and well, all the core beers were, and we, we needed to upgrade. I I'd always heard that they were trying to expand after year five, but after year three, we started looking. And then there's another facility that called, it's, it's called Southern Mill, also a historical preservation named after the, the mill before. Um, not too far away, like a mile or two miles away. Um, it's where we do all our core beers. It's the it's a mass production facility. Um, nice. Like I was saying, we got top of line everything there. So um, I started here, bounced there, and then that became the core beer facility, uh, core brand facility. And this snow tire, the uh, the original location became the curious and the specialty brands uh, location. So the barrel aging, classical styles, one offs. I came over here to help out. I was the package lead here. We all uh, train each other, the, me, the seller person and the brewer, uh, all shared roles and uh and that's still going on today they still put push out five or so brands a, a month that are fun new mm. styles you can't really find in common like especially for us you, you got to come to the brewery to get it um mm. luckily you'll get we're getting some of those in tennessee so <clears throat> nice um, yeah so sorry <laughs> to rant on that but from production no, to that's, sales, what we want. Mm-hmm. that's what we want it's i i I hate that I can't make it to the brewery, you know, especially right now. And you guys are sitting there and, and all the good beer you have. Michelle, we were literally like you were in Nashville yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And we met yes. up for beers. And <clears throat> you're like, well, I might do this from the, you know, from the tap room in Athens tomorrow because I'm going to be there. And she's like, and I'm going to, I'm going to hit up Asa as well. It's just, it's, it's wild how all of us are based in Nashville, but yet we're doing this virtual <laughs> podcast show. <clears throat> Mitch is in Chattanooga and then you guys are in, in Georgia right now. Yep. So it's a good thing we I have practice like... during COVID. That's right. <laughs> True that. Cheers to that. Uh, yeah. Bebo four point, super easy drinking beer, 4.8%, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, really easy to drink too. Did I get that ABV right? I can't I think remember. it's over 5%. I think it's 5.2. 5.2. Okay, got it. Um, super crispy, super easy to drink. Michelle is totally right. Um, Mitch has been trying to get me on the Pilsner train for, well, yeah, I guess it's been three years back when when you were talking with us, Michelle, from Wiseacre, um, <clears throat> you know, going through the gambit there and having all those beers when we were talking about Pilsners. And yeah. Mitch was trying then, and he has succeeded because now I'm kind of getting more... I think my story leads a little bit more on the hoppy side first. So like Smith and Lentz for me. You a know, dry hopped Pilsner. Right? Yeah, the dry hopped Pilsners. That's kind of what got my forward because I'm a hop head. So getting me into that scene by introducing, you know, some dry hops and stuff like that, kind of give it a hoppy profile. And then from there, I'm able to kind of dial it down a little bit. So something like Bebo is right up my alley. I, it's super mm-hmm. crispy. It's super clean, cold. Love it. Um, didn't plan on drinking the whole can, but I'm already going that route right now. The second, the second I opened it and took a sip, I feel like I drank half of it. It's that I easy know, to drink. Uh, it is. It's just very refreshing. <clears throat> it's uh, such an easy drinker. You know how I love my pilsners from my previous mm. uh, tenure with Weisaker. <laughs> yeah. um, but also, really cool. Uh, another really great fact about this beer. Um, usually, um, every year at the Craft Brewers Conference, uh, they host a World Beer Cup. From all over the world, people can submit in. Uh, so we submitted in Bebo for the German Pilsner category, which was the third most uh, submissions. And we came out with a bronze medal. And nice. it was during the one that actually was held in Nashville. 
And so it was really, really <laughs> fun to physically be celebrating with my team with a little medal. So um, yeah. I'm glad that it's getting the love that it deserves. Uh, we were kind of hoping for a win in GABF, but it's okay. Or not GABF, um, this year's Craft Brewers Conference mm -hmm. out in Vegas. But it's okay. We can. We still do. We can it. still flex an old, we can an still, old medal. Yeah. yeah. Name, <laughs> winning <laughs> the Pils, German Pilsner a at a World Beer beat. Cup is a flex. So. It really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, nod back to our previous episode that we did together. You know, uh, you can't hide behind your Pilsner. So <clears> it's <throat> still a massive flex, and we're really proud of it. Oh, that's, that's a good impressive quote. as hell. God. being able to hide behind the hops on it you're right i think that was mentioned actually it's because mm. you can throw mistakes behind hops right and you can cover them up with hops and if you make something hoppy enough you can and if something gets too bad you can throw adjuncts in it and stuff like that pilsners are clean right pilsners they're they're fresh they're clean clean they're crispy you screw up on a pilsner you're going to notice it really quickly absolutely yeah it's uh yeah it's a it is a very hard style to perfect but absolutely worth it it's uh, it's universal if you can really nail it down so and part of the core beers too right bebo is part of yes, the core it beer is part of our core lineup have. and it is year-round available in nashville both in package and draft <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna have to get some of these and i'm sorry there you go <laughs> it's fine <laughs> <laughs> i am i'm definitely gonna have to pick up a pack of these because uh i'm officially a first time homeowner and got my first mower. So this will come in handy whenever. Let's get the white new balances <laughs> out, Mitch. How about a I know <laughs> that you and Asa have numbers now. Let us let us make that your uh home warm, home warming present to you. It's Ooh. Fresh All you. right. All right. I, I, I will gladly accept it <laughs> <laughs> and drink all of it. Hopefully not <laughs> in one day. <laughs> um it's cool. awesome. You're right, Mitch. I drank that one completely. I've got one sip left, two sips. I think I'm going to... It's clean. It's got just enough dryness. It leaves me a little bit thirsty for the next next sip. And it just invites you in, keeps you. It's very good. Yeah, very good. Super crushable well at the same time. Shout yeah. out Creature Comforts. Um, let's jump over to the mm. next one. Let's just kind of keep the good times rolling and the beer flowing. So I think we're jumping into Tropicalia next. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I think that was the that was the layout that we <laughs> wanted to go. We consulted with the beer experts on the show here and uh, they said that that was the next one we needed to go with. Okay. Let's see. Roll with the Tropicalia. There's... So IPA, uh, one of yes. my favorite styles, if not probably my favorite style of beer clocking in six and a half percent ish abv this one this is, is uh, 6.6 6.6 yeah. 6. okay um my first ever creature comforts beer was this one so i am i'm i'm partial to this i love this one and i don't think it was part of the core lineup Originally? Actually, it's a brand that really launched everything for us. So really? when you say okay, that that cool. was your first Creature Comfort beer, that's most everyone's first Creature Comfort beer. Um, the owners, uh, you know, met during their homebrewing days, uh, had come up with a recipe for Tropicalia. We decided to figure out how to mass produce it. And for the first uh, couple years of us producing this beer, we could not meet the demand uh, that we were just as soon as we would put it on a truck, people were buying it left and right. And so it is 60% uh, of our overall business is Tropicalia. So wow. this is the, definitely the flagship brand. It's the most well-known. Uh, it's the one who has gotten us to the point that we're, we are currently at as a brewery. Interesting. That's I, awesome. <clears throat> I kind of... I kind of thought that I was jumping in late to the Creature Comforts game. I didn't know that this was the IPA, the, the beer that kind of helped launch the company. So I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm it's, my... it's still that's still no that's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, no. we I love that's one of the things I love about helping bring this brand to uh, South Carolina and Tennessee is to <clears throat> to help this be a, a gateway to people trying our brand. So that so that's been that that's your role, right, Michelle? When you yes. when you jumped on with Creature Comforts, the goal was to launch. Um, Nashville, Chattanooga, Middle Tennessee, those surrounding areas, and, and that's what you're helping do right now, right? Yeah, so I, uh, I started off uh, just kind of getting things up and going in Nashville, um, just trying to see what the brand could do, uh, trickling it down over to Chattanooga, 
now to Knoxville, um, and now he'll do the same process and maintain things with all of Tennessee and all of South Carolina. So I am, my official title is area sales manager for Tennessee and South Carolina. But right again, on. I have Asa, uh, who's in Chattanooga, who's phenomenal, uh, who's really crushing it down there. I have a wonderful rep named Brittany, who's crushing Knoxville for me, and a really awesome dude named Tim in, in Charleston. And potentially another rep in South Carolina is coming soon. Gang busters, Busy, man. busy. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of traveling. We're all like gang busters. <laughs> So Mitch pulled up Mitch pulled up Tropicalia uh, on the screen. So six point six percent ABV. Um, Citra hopped. Big fan of Citra. Expensive hop, but probably my favorite hop. Centennial hops. Galaxy. Um, Galaxy is my second favorite hop. So I, I didn't think about so this. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the hop profile earlier today on this one, and it it really explains to me why I love Tropicalia so much because it's got two of my favorite hops mixed into a single mm. IPA. So this one's great. Um, it's juicy, but it's and not dry, not hazy, not New England style. It's just, it's a good all around um, IPA. And uh, I'm a big uh, fan the, of this. What I love to tell people, especially about this IPA, is that it is so unique for being an IPA that even non-IPA drinkers can really enjoy this beer. Um, you know, West Coast style, more tropical fruitiness up front even when people tell me that they're not into ipas when i'm trying to get them to try it i just go please just try it you would be surprised because i'm not much of an ipa person i love to drink tropicalia because it is not like your traditional ipa flavor it's just very well balanced uh and it doesn't make you feel overly full now i will say usually i have to cap myself about two because of ABV, but <laughs> yeah. found that out yeah. the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tropicalia, I, I fail to remember exactly which year I had it for the first time, but I only ever heard good things about it, which led to my first purchase of it mm -hmm. off the tap somewhere. And then it's kind of like when you recognize a model car for the first time and you see it on the street everywhere. That's how I kind of feel about Tropicalia. I had it one time and then I saw it everywhere. So I always have a good, solid choice wherever I go. So, you know, it's one of those I've always appreciated seeing it because I know I'll enjoy that one, you know, so. Yeah, um, it's um, this brand, I mean, all of our brands are very important to us, but um, we do a, a sensory panel within our company. Uh, you must uh, test into it. You must maintain a certain percentage or average to stay on the sensory panel. Uh, but every batch of our beers, uh, especially with Tropicalia, they are put through the panel test almost three times a week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we are, we are making sure that it stays consistent with every single flavor profile that's supposed to be, it's supposed to have. And basically if one person comes back and says, nah, this is not their, this is not what it's supposed to taste like. We don't, we don't send it. Huh. And I wonder, awesome. if that, I wonder if that plays into this, this is, I was going to save this probably towards the end, but this might be a good time to talk about this since we're, we're drinking it. But I wonder if that plays to the whole, like the desire to find Tropicana, because there's a, we were talking about this yesterday, Michelle, there's a Marvel like cinematic universe play in here with Tropicalia yes, and there is. just I people on set a, wanting to, facility to see the huh? box that was signed by everybody. So, nice. um, but Tell yeah, no, we, that. um, we do have Marvel movie connections with this brand. Uh, it kind of joke. I think Chris Heron thought it was a spam email. Chris Heron's our CEO of Creature. Um, but when they were filming uh, the Avengers Endgame, uh, mo as you know, most of us nerds know, <laughs> it was filmed uh, in the Atlanta area. And they were, um, actually it was Chris Hemsworth that said, if I have to play this bigger version of my character, then I want a damn good craft beer to go with it because Americans do craft beer really well. Australians don't. <laughs> and so they had found Tropicalia, loved it so much. They were basically chasing our distributor's truck into delivery. Like when they would go put put the product into gro excuse me, grocery stores or uh, liquor stores and just buy, excuse me, buying it. And wow. so when we got that notification that they wanted to feature in the movie, we kind of were all like, there's no way. <laughs> and you don't want us to pay for it? Like, come on. 
well, you, you just like it. You're just a big fan, huge fans. So um, that kind of segues into why we have our LA facility now. Uh, so we have the wonderful Rusu brothers and several members of the cast members from the Avenger series that, um, you know, invested in us because they believe in our, in our product and that's how we're in LA now. Actually right next to the Rusu brothers uh, production it's, facility. It's underneath their office. So. They joked uh, when they were <laughs> uh, doing a little session like this at that tap room that they just want a line of Tropicalia directly like there's an own tap for them to have. Uh, but it's it Same. is super it is super cool actually um you should pull up a picture of sure your right now drinking tropicalia so that was the every glass kind of thing yeah it Man. was uh it was uh, and it was funny when i first started with them of being such an avid follower of that movie series for so long that i had to go back and like the leonardo the caprio me and be like oh my gosh how did i miss it it's right there that's it's crazy <laughs> and it was really cool from what i have learned um they uh we basically the whole entire company like took the day and all went to the movies together and celebrated it it was really really cool so that one uh, i think that third picture uh from the top yeah yep, right there. Uh, you just type in oh fat. It looks Bat like it, the that. dude abides. Yeah. That, I always think about that in that movie whenever I see this scene right here. But yeah, he's drinking trouble. That's cow. totally yeah. inspiration. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't the that wasn't the first that wasn't the only um <laughs> creature comforts beer that was an endgame. There was another one as well, I think. Wasn't he drinking some sort of a um was it a sour or was it? I can't yes, remember. Yes, it was, was Athena, drinking. which is our uh, Berliner Weiss. Yeah. Um, also, we took home uh, bronze at GABF with that one last year. So shout out to our Berliner Weiss. It's crushing it. Uh, we'll definitely have to get, get that in y'all's hands sometime. I know we're not tasting it today, but um, I believe actually um, it was. I think I saw the picture of the Athena. It's kind of back when he's in. Oh. When he kind of gl he gives himself a glow up. He shaves his beard. Yeah. He glows up. There's also a shot where he's wearing an Athena shirt, too. Uh, no it. way. He shows a go lot for of it. Yeah. No, go for it. Which, shout out to him. I just went and saw Mad Max Furiosa, and uh, he did a great job. With nice. It was I can't wait to see that one. I mean, it's clearly a great movie, but... God, I hate him and his good looks. I hate Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Stupid, good-looking hey, dude. Yeah, I, you can attribute his good looks to the beer he drank. So That's I do right. want to bring up a callback from our previous episode. I, the the Fast and Furious season, our series has ended. I told you it was never going to end, so I would like to stand corrected three years later. Oh, so on the record, that was a false statement. It did end, uh, and every time you say family, it's just not going to happen. Every time, every time. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Oh, that dang. In fairness, um, we still have one more. I think in the third, in the tenth, I think they split the tenth one into three different parts. So you have one more movie. So you're what? not wrong yet. Oh, I okay. feel like I love that. I love not, <laughs> yeah. I love the yet part. So we'll yes, just, we'll, we'll roll with that. <laughs> There's definitely one coming. And they made totally... a trilogy off the last number. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fast and the you furious. Know they gotta man. Come on, as much as they can. It's for family. It's for family. It's for family. Hey, cheers that's, to family. Cheers. That's cool. Cheers, cheers, to, family. cheers to family. Cheers to family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is cool. Not a lot of breweries have a connection into Hollywood like that, especially in Marvel Studios. It is it is definitely something that literally was like a seeing a shooting star that's not very common. So it's it's been wonderful. Um, we owe a lot of that to uh, them. And hopefully that just helps progress us into uh, nationwide distribution one of these days. So... Um, but like Asa said, we're just mainly doing localized distribution in the LA area. Um, we also, beautiful building, uh, actually took many years to get it to be uh, functioning for a brewery, but a lot of intelligent and wonderful people on our team made, made it happen. And getting to see it in person, I've only been able to see it one time, was truly mind blowing. So I hope <laughs> to go out there and uh, help them sell some beer in LA. I think that would be a fun new challenge for me. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, such a cool place, but man, I wish the cost of living was a little less. Uh, <laughs> well, we're kind of running into in that in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. So. It's everywhere. True, true. I'm not living So overall, LA. guys, how do you think about Tropicalia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second I opened the can, I was hit with that aroma. It, 
Oh, it's awesome. Michelle very, definitely hit Very those. inviting. Yeah. Very smooth. You know, really great mixture of tropical fruit that you're getting. Um, 6.8, but it doesn't really drink like a 6.8, which uh, mm-hmm. is wonderful yet dangerous <laughs> for yeah. me in particular. Maybe not for you gentlemen. Y'all are more experienced probably, but... <laughs> Yeah, experience. Um, That's the term we're using. Yeah, we're going to go with experience. (laughs) It's not that I'm three times Michelle's size. It's that I'm more experienced. (laughs) That's what I'm rolling with. Um, But yeah, I I love this. For for fans of yours, you know, (laughs) please try Tropicalia. It it truly is a very wonderful IPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this one's good. This one is, it's, it's definitely my favorite in the IPA series. Um, but you guys have, you guys brought out definitely a, 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 a hazy IPA as well. And I got a chance to try that at my local watering hole, probably a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And I don't know if it was the, maybe it was the day that I was having, or maybe it was the fact that I hadn't eaten, but that one hit me pretty hard and it's not that much higher in terms of ABV. It might actually be lower. I can't remember. It's, um, the you go bigger six, dreams. Six, six 6.8. Six six okay, so it's it's about on par. But Tropicalia is like that's how I recognize creature comforts. It is such a and you're right, Michelle. Tropicalia is one of those IPAs that hop heads can like, people that aren't into IPAs can like that still because it's got that fruit forward aspect, but it's not like that stupid dank like peel your face off flavor when you drink it. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't lean towards the hazy side, right? So it doesn't have that thick, dry, um, you mm-hmm. know, creamy feel to it. It's just, it's an all around well-balanced IPA with a ton of fruit forward flavor. And it's got a, a, a mid six range alcohol to boot. So this one's awesome. Definitely my favorite. But Bigger Dreams is a pretty close follow-up. It's about man. to be what? really rich is the hop head. I'm, the next one's going to excite you, and I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> what you got, Mitch? I'm sorry. I, I almost cut Mitch off. No, it's fine. It's fine. I was waiting. I was waiting. The uh, It's funny. Like This definitely does feel like a well-balanced IPA, and that might be a bit controversial to some Belgians. But um, our, we had a, the honor of talking to St. Bernardus and several other people. Uh, during that CBC in Nashville. And they were like oh, probably a good 60% of the time talking about balance with their beers. Mm-hmm. And Americans don't care really about balance on uh, the majority of the beers that we make, like pastry stouts and <laughs> IPAs and whatever. But this one, as far as IPAs go, I feel like it's an enjoyable ride no matter what, as long as you understand what a IPA is, you know, and mm-hmm. you're seeking that out. But um, it's weird. It, it's definitely, it's got just enough pininess, but a lot of that tropical kind of hit. It just, it's delicious. So yeah. it's very welcoming for somebody yeah. who, you know, uh, we talked about our gateway IPAs whenever we last spoke to each other. Yes. Uh, I literally tell people this could be their gateway IPA. I mean, still shout out to Bell's Too Hearted. I still love it, <laughs> but I think if I had known about Tropicalia or even a creature comfort didn't exist when I started drinking beer back in the day, mm-hmm. this would have definitely put the nail in the coffin for me to love IPAs. And so it's been really oh, fun yeah. to get people who um, are hesitant to try an IPA style to really like, they'll be like, oh, oh man, I can drink that. I go, yeah, it's great. So it's just all about the building blocks to get them to you know expand their palate. So. Mm-hmm. Man. Cheers, creature comforts, Tropicalia. Right so there. solid, man. I'm uh, empty in my glass, so I'm drinking out of the can. <laughs> I'm glad that you hit on uh, the pineness, Mitchell, because that's why I love Trop. That piney, woodsy uh, notes really pair well with the uh, citrus notes. That The piney notes coming from the Centennial, oh, it does have some it. citrus value to it, too. Uh, but Galaxy and Citra have a lot of that in it. Mm-hmm. In it. They made a great recipe with the uh, with the combination of the woodsy yet fruity flavors mm. that come from the from the hops. So balance is the key word, like you're saying. So definitely, yeah. This one be drinkable. Yep. Yeah, this one will get you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the I sneaky ABV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can it's so good. Two now. <laughs> you can do two now. Yeah, it's time to go home. <laughs> okay. 
and have another one when I'm at home and safe. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. <Yeah>. Good call. <laughs> I like the uh, after drive beer. It's the like after a drive beer. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, we're unfortunately adults. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wanna, we can't drink like we used to. No. Yeah. We, we also have we also have adult like money, so we can go and do stuff if we want. <laughs> what is an age? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's jump over to the uh, the hazy side. So let's kick the ABV up just a little bit, not too much. Like Asa said, we're going from six six to six eight, so barely noticeable, negligible. But moving from the IPA, the regular IPA, kind of an American style, not too West Coast, not too. You know, not too American, but jumping over to the hazy kind of side. Um, this does not drink to me. So this is Bigger Dreams Hazy IPA, um, 6.8% ABV. Does not necessarily drink like your typical New England style. Your New England styles are normally like drier. Um, this is kind of more um, a little bit, a little bit on the juicy side, but definitely hazy. Um, lighter in color. Yeah, definitely. Mitch has got it up on the page there right now. Fruit forward flavor, um, grapefruit and peach. Those are the two profiles that I picked out when I had this beer. Um, <clears throat> but there's also other profiles like tangerine, grapefruit, nectarine, uh, and apricots as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Cracky <laughs> out of me. And I'm just like, Ace and I just had to do the gentle reach over. Like, oh, yeah. oh. Yes, we love our bigger go, dreams. Guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> so this is good. Um, relatively new to the market, Michelle, is that correct? So yes. Um, so we came out with this brand uh, in the winter, early last year. You know, IPAs are not going anywhere. Hazies are not going anywhere. And it was something that we felt like we were we were needing to like fully round out our portfolio to say that we can make a great hazy that can be competitive with all the other wonderful hazies out there. And so we kept it in Georgia only for the first year and within that year. So from the sales perspective, we get data called IRI data, which is basically pulled from massive change like Kroger, Publix, uh, convenience stores, where we get to see where dollar ranking wise, we are making our money or what how our brands are doing. And so Within that year, just even Georgia alone, it became the fourth most grossing new item to come into the Georgia market. And, you know, when we approached our Tennessee and South Carolina folks about it, they're not going to say no to a hazy. It's it's a great way to make money because they know it sells. And so we just recently, within the past couple of months, have been slowly uh, introducing this brand uh, into our markets here in Tennessee. Uh, it's been going phenomenally well, of, as I was hoping it would. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, but it doesn't, I love it. Um, I do not like hazies. I do not like hazy IPAs very often. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like I'm chewing on them and I don't want to chew on my beer, which is why I love this one so well, because it is very well balanced enough that it, in light, still kind of like, you know, silky drinking. Uh, that you just don't even really recognize that it's a hazy other than looking at it. So mm -hmm. it's it's really a wonderful. They've done a, they did a wonderful <clears throat> job. <laughs> Asa, I'll let you get into specifics. <laughs> I thought Rich was about to get up and start walking here. No, that's what I did, did, man. I was mad. I was upset. I was yeah. getting ready to leave. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that held me back was my hoodie got caught on the shirt, so I just decided to sit down <laughs> instead of looking like an idiot. Like he's about to come to the camera. And... Oh, I mean, that's fine. We can meet up at Sweet Rich if you want to fight me. <laughs> that's okay. Just bring the beer. That's all it takes. <laughs> A beer off. A beer off, uh, that's right. The one thing I'd like to add about this beer uh, that I love about this is um, drinkability is a big thing for a creature. I uh, wanted to be like approachable. Um, the, the, I think a sad fact of life that hoppy beers, unfortunately, age quicker than your, your, your sour beers, your stouts. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the hop flavor profiles and, and how they are affected by from what I understand, the pH of the, of the beer, and there's certain things that break it down over time. So if you notice on the bottom of all our cans, you'll see it. Uh, there'll be a, a date, and there'll be a, it'll be a package date and an expiration date, and uh, it'll also have the batch code. 
huge mm-hmm. on quality. But I will say what was cool about Bigger Dreams is when they were designing uh, the recipe, they they brewed the base um, beer for it. Uh, they had the grain bill they, they knew they wanted, and they put it into a bunch of little tanks, and they dry hopped all the little tanks separately and <clears throat> tasted oh. that beer over time so they could see how that one hop aged with the the grain bill, the beer, for for probably for two or three months and uh they would they mapped out when the sweet spot was so like okay it's really singing from weeks two to four uh it's it's too green the first week but it's in but two to four it's really fruity and they made like a what i they described to me as a kaleidoscopic effect where they like it's it's a blend of five or six hops uh i don't know the exact number but it's 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 over five where uh each one is like equally represented, whereas in Tropicalia, mm. Citra is honestly the big hop. Um, the other ones do complement it well, but in Bigger Dreams, it's more of like a, a chorus singing together. Um, and mm. it ages really well in a sense where all these hops have different points during the, the aging period where they have like a, a high point. And so it ages really well um, for an IPA still within, uh, three to four months, I would say for this one. Um, but cause it, with hoppy beverages, with hoppy beers, like it, freshness is a lot. So, yeah. um, even with Tropicalia, I think like if you find it, or if you drink it within the first week, it's almost too, it's not too green. It's more green mm-hmm. and it finds its balance and all IPAs over time, the, the, the hoppy profile falls down and the malt profile comes up and, there's a there's a there's a period where the balance is great. Well, at least with Tropicalia and Bigger Dreams, where the the balance is like where you want it, and that's where we come in. We call it a control. We make sure beer is fresh everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, especially with Tropicalia and Bigger Dreams because of all this. So it's we good... uh, typically ask for uh, well, our code date per se for our hobby brands is 90 days. That's where we have found, and it, you, that is kind of traditional with other IPA brands, not just our own, but that's where we have coded. This is where we feel comfortable letting our fans experience this product or our product. And then usually when we're, as Ace and I being in sales, we're going in there and we're encouraging, like, especially for like package stores, we want it in the cooler if you have it available. Because if, you know, it, there can be such a big difference between a cold stored beer versus a warm stored uh, IPA beer. Hmm. And then big thing about us too is that we're consistently like even when we're making visits to places that are carrying our product mm-hmm. we're we're coding all the dates because we internally keep track of that to see like okay should we maybe pivot to another brand if they're not moving through it fast enough or um you know maybe we need to have this discussion with rotation you know mm-hmm. it helps us teach our fans and people who want to carry our brand like the the importance behind the quality and why we are so adamant about it so it's it's really it's really amazing we just we want it to be so consistent that if you were here in athens and you tasted the beer and then you're in chattanooga or in nashville it tastes like the same beer i'm fairly confident right now with both of you guys having bigger dreams in your hands that we're drinking the same quality of beer Hmm. so unsung heroes there by the way like (laughs) Consumer will never know. Uh, they'll just buy it, drink it, and go, ah, hate well, it or actually, love it. Well, actually, I but... feel like that is changing uh, significantly. Yeah. Um, mainly, um, I, I have people now who I didn't realize, my friends that were are now big <laughs> beer people, they're like, oh, if it's out of date, I'm not buying it. Yep. Like, Oh, that's actually, amazing. Yeah. Actively checking the dates on things, <clears throat> which is truly amazing. Because originally, Mitch, you were are correct. It was just like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. It's one drink it. But I think now in the beer, especially the craft beer world, we have come to a certain knowledge point Mm. where because of how popular it's been getting that we are collectively as fans of this amazing beer, um, just know that quality needs to be a key. And that's, you know, the craft beer industry has been kind of in decline this year. You know, um, there's been still challenges coming out of COVID. There's still challenges even with the next generation coming up of of people drinking. And so I think that's where, you know, situations where we are still seeing wins 
is because we are caring about that quality and where you're seeing other brands being lack on it, mm -hmm. those unfortunately may not make it because people actually are caring now. Yeah. And Mitch, you think That's back to, awesome. you think back to the main street, main street liquor in Nashville, Tennessee, shout out Aaron Horton. Shout out Aaron. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good people. You want to talk about a dude that's a stickler for quality and and freshness. That's why I love working with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's my boy. I love Aaron. And he gets it. He and he. Truly and does. you're right. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. He gets it. And we even had Aaron on the show. We did an episode uh, at Smokers Abbey. I think it was in the Gallatin location, Mitch, wasn't it? Or was it? No, in the, it was no, Gallatin, a, Nashville it was location. Nashville. Yeah. And nice. we were all sitting in the back and, and Mitch had brought some IPAs that he, he kind of knew was a little past its prime, you know? So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to put Mitch on blast by any means. Like he knew it was, and they definitely, I learned a hard lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they were definitely past, but the cool thing about that is, is that brought up conversation with Aaron and, you know, and, and he's like, these, these reps are coming out of these distributors and they're dropping off the beer and, and he's going like this. Like he's looking at the bottom of the cans and he was like, dude, this thing is, you know, 120 days past, you know, canning. Like, I don't want that. Get that out of here and bring me the good yeah. stuff. And he'll only, and he'll buy enough knowing where his consumer base is going to buy it. And that's it. He doesn't want them sitting for too long because Michelle and Asa, if, if we're drinking a bigger dreams, hazy IPA, that's was canned six months ago. I'm not having the same experience. Eight months ago, I'm not you having the not same be experience. Having an actual IPA. No, you would be having like a sweet little dessert. It would be yeah. more cloying. It would be sweeter. You, it wouldn't be as floral and fruity. It would. Yep. I mean, maybe fruity, but like dark fruits. Yeah, but say mm -hmm. so you're gonna get more of like the prune, fig, like molasses almost taste yeah, with that. So like when you're when you're picking up on those hints, especially with hoppier beers, that's where you gotta go. When was this? Mm -hmm. packaged and, that, and, and all that all that to say that's not the experience you guys want with this ipa or you that's know your other ipa mm -hmm. right so you don't want you don't want long shelf life yeah and, and i and i definitely found my that. i found myself in the beer store the other day i was looking at i was stopping at my beer store i was looking at the michelle just as you said i'm looking at the bottom of the cans you know, and I'm looking and I'm like, uh, I looked at beer and I go, man, I remember when they brewed that one. And then I went, that was months ago. So I'm looking at now the bottom of every can. The guy comes up, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm checking the freshness on your cans. And he goes, well, do they all look old? And I'm like, yeah, they do. And I was like, I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to grab this one. And I was like, I'm not going to grab these two four packs because they're IPAs and they're 160 days plus past their can date. I was like, that's months beyond where you yes. should be drinking something like that. And there are IPAs that you can drink in that range. These were not them. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to have that conversation. So sorry to almost interrupt you there, Mitch. Mm. No, no, no. <laughs> not good. Do you all realize your names are very similar sometimes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Uh, but from the sales side, even now of being in the industry for the time period I have been, I mean, that's something that when you're, just as you were saying, Rich, when, you know, going in and checking dates, when we are courting or being courted by potential distro partners and we're going out there and we're scouting the market, the first thing we're doing is we're checking other brands within our portfolio and we're checking to see, has it been rotated? Do they care about the date? Because we're so big on that like we're actually kind of encouraging um more of our wholesalers to be more adamant about date checking because you know it, it complacency happens but that's also where complacency gets us in trouble mm -hmm. and so we're kind of it's been really fun to be the brand to shake it up and say no we we want this is a priority for us and if we cannot sustain that and if you're not able to sustain that with other brands within your uh the portfolio that you have then maybe this isn't the right partnership for us to, to you know, take, be part of. So, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, that's why that's why we're winning. I mean, I kind of imagine it when you're like, it's like a grocery store, they're, mm -hmm. they're gonna order as much milk as they know before, will sell before expires. And mm -hmm. that's been for decades. Mm -hmm. and with beer, it's, it's kind of like, it'll get there with, but have y'all ever been to Vermont? Y'all ever been to Stowe? Mm -hmm. Or anywhere in, oh my gosh. I wish, man. I wish. 
Like, <laughs> I can't. I I don't typically drink IPAs regularly. Like I I love trying them, but like I like as met as like what as far as like drinking them throughout the day. But when you're in Vermont, and you have like Hill Farmstead and Lawson's Finest and The Alchemist and Fiddlehead, oh. and it goes on. What's crazy is there are these little tiny hole in the wall little shops that have beer and i mean there could only be a maybe a few thousand people in this town but that 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 guy understands the importance of quality and he orders minimally to keep it within like a month or two of freshness and it that's like a that's a that's like a hurdle i guess i mean that's uh, a pivotal part of my role currently with creature is managing the inventory with our wholesale partners and making sure that we're not over ordering and yeah. that we're still meeting what we think the demand is, but also, mm. you know, I've had to be real and say, I'm not going to give you 900 cases of Tropicalia. You don't need 900 cases. I can give you 300 because <laughs> I know realistically this will move and meet the freshness date line that we want in place. Mm. And then that's just put it on another order, man. We got yeah. it. So it's, it's been a lot of fun to help, you know, bring that educational aspect, um, to our consumers and to our wholesaler partners because again creature cares so deeply about it and yeah <laughs> i appreciate that attention to detail every time mitch yeah. looks up at his monitor i feel like he's about to pull something up on the screen he's looking for well, something <laughs> so uh, i've been getting more and more into sake over the years mm -hmm. and I've, I've kind of established a collection before i knew better but the majority of sake technically should be stored in a refrigeration unit. Mm. Oh, okay. actually, and I'll be honest, I didn't know that. It, you know, for sure, any NAMA versions, those are unpasteurized, need to be refrigerated, <clears throat> and those do get it typically, but you don't see a bunch of those, at least in the southeast right now. But sake is on the rise, and we have local sake breweries coming up because just the South is good for growing rice, especially over in Arkansas. But it's it's a growing thing. Places are learning. I was impressed with uh, Chattanooga. They have sake in the fridge, but it was only thanks to the guy who's distributing it saying, I require fridge space for this stuff. Hmm. Otherwise, I'm not going to let you sell it. That's so kind of what we're doing, too, to, in all honesty, is just being like, this is what we need. And if you're unable to do that, then, I mean, all right, thank you. But yeah. we'll, we'll find somebody who can. So And shout yeah. out to Litman Distribution. Yes. For, uh, they, um, they get behind the quality control aspect. They yes, they are. They understand, like, sure, I can, I'd love to sell eight cases to this location. But, like, let's figure out what sells in a reasonable time to make sure the beer tastes good. So it's, it's I appreciate uh, that very much. The uh, yeah. brand yeah. manager actually sent me an email not too long ago and was like, these are out of date, Michelle, or, or we need to do something about it. It was a, it was a Berlin or Vice. It was still fine, honestly. Honestly, it was still fine. Yeah. But when he called me, he goes, you have scared the crap out of me to have anything out of date. And I just go, then I did my job. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <sit on> you. <laughs> and that's what we want, because as, as consumers, as we're drinking these beers, you don't want we don't you guys don't want the the wrong impression of the beers and if you and if we're drinking something that's out of date and we don't necessarily know some of us consumers are a little bit more mindful than others but the average consumer is going to take a sip of that beer and it's going to go oh that tastes weird and then they're just not going to go back to it they're going to assign that that mindset to mm -hmm. a creature comforts beer that they had and they were like oh, i'm just not going to go back so it's it's extremely important to have that knowledge and say, okay, the, we're only going to have this beer for this amount of time and this. And and Michelle, you're right. The whole freshness, the best by date and the whole like canned on and having that range of saying this is when it's best to be enjoyed is super important. IPAs definitely fall into that category. The, the you know, the fresher, the better. Aza, I, I totally get it. The whole like, you know, maybe a week or two after it's canned, it's greener you know, than it normally would be. And there's that kind of sweet spot as the time ages and it goes by and you find that and you could definitely hit that, that turning point too fast. Um, sours. 
I don't know much about that. This is Mitch is well, laughing at I mean, me right we're now. We're gonna go move on to one here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right that, that was my rough like. That was my rough <laughs> intro into that's talking about because because I know nothing. I know nothing about go and we may have even talked about this with Michelle a while back. I know we had this conversation yesterday, <laughs> Michelle, when we were talking. Um, Good transition. Yeah. <laughs> We met up for beer. She ordered a sour. I ordered a a, a crispy boy pilsner. You uh, and... you actually ordered a Wiseacre party color because shout out to my boys at Wiseacre, still <laughs> yeah. love them. But yeah, but they the waitress had switched it and they uh, totally Rich switched it. He goes, what is yeah. this? I go, oh yeah, that's mine. <laughs> In fairness, and this is the one we're getting into next, but yes. this one was actually really tasty. I enjoyed it very much. It wasn't the, and, and I feel like Mitch and I joke about this all the time, that I always say, I don't like sours, I don't like sours, I don't like sours. And then I have it and I go, you know what? This isn't too bad. This one's actually really good. There is only one you've absolutely hated, and that was the first one I ever shared with you. Yep. And that was you, that was. But to be I, fair, Mitch, did you go overboard on it? Because so, yeah, I can see you doing he, that. He totally it's a Flanders red. Oh, yeah. why would you? Do that? Yeah, he totally. We were having a New Year's <laughs> Eve party, and my definition of craft beer at the time was Blue Moon Shock Top and you know Killian's Irish Red. And I thought I was drinking craft beer, and then Mitch was like, "Hey, have you tried this? Embrace the Funk beer from." Nashville, was it Tennessee. Tennessee? No, it's is embrace some funk. So shout out to my boy Brandon. Yeah, yeah. shout La out Rouge Brandon. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. do those La Rouge or he knows I, I don't how to speak. do those sours yeah. real well. Yeah. Uh, even some of them sometimes. As much as I love his brewing technique, I have to take my thumbs and just pray a little bit. Take your thumbs. <laughs> yeah. um, That's this is exactly why I'm excited right. to get into this next one with you guys. Is because I think that these styles are actually why you liked it so much rich is because i like to call them you know how we say our gateway ipa mm -hmm. this is our gateway sour okay all right that makes sense so this is the the tritonio cucumber and lime it's a fruited goza creature comforts super easy drinking four and a half percent abv um tart slightly tart not funky which is what i like about this beer mm -hmm. um this is more of like a hot beach hanging out by the pool easy drinking beer like it, yes. it's only it's only oh, yeah. sour quote unquote due to like the you know the the lime aspect that comes in it but it's definitely got notes of cucumber um a little bit of sea salt but mostly lime forward which is why i wasn't necessarily put off michelle when we were drinking it and i took a sip of it and i was like whoa you remember my face i was like i think we have the wrong beer switched <laughs> Uh, but I wasn't mad at it. This one's super good, super easy to drink. So I'm a I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of this. I'm actually so not yeah, too often do I get pour that sour into my on glass. the nose, that lime. Um, yeah, that tartness kind of comes up front. But again, what I love about this the Ghost of Styles and Berliner vices like Arafita, very similar, um, you know, like tasting wise, is that it doesn't wreck your palate. Like the Flanders red that Mitch gave you. <laughs> that <made> you, <laughs> um, you know, these are very, very drinkable in the summertime. Or, you know, usually these are when they're in their peak. I mean, I would I drink Tritonia year round, but I'm also, this is my favorite thing that Creature makes. Literally one of my favorite things that Creature made. So um, every time it comes out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I will run down and buy myself a six pack because I was like, I have to have it. But, you know, the <laughs> spice on it, it's not too overwhelming. The sea salt's not too overwhelming. The tartness, again, just kind of hits you up front and then really mellows out towards the end of the palate. And it's four and a half percent. Uh, so you can definitely crush a few of these. These can make a great lawn beer if you're ever out Hell there yeah. on a hot summer day. Um, also, I like to add tequila to mine every once in a while if I'm feeling Oh, cool. that's a good <laughs> idea. Add some tequila <laughs> to something like this. Now you're speaking yes. my language. <laughs> Rich so, has entered the no uh, spin zone. I'm ready now. Let's fucking go. I yeah. Put some tequila in my. That's awesome, dude. I can totally get on board with that. Paradiso series, though. Is that did I pronounce yeah. that right? Yeah, you did. You know, mm -hmm. Alma, okay. you did nail it. Usually, um, we get different. A lot of very different variations. My I, and I'm going to shout out my Knoxville rep who is lurking here in the corner. She calls it Paradis disco. 
Hell yeah. yeah Paradisio. So oh. <laughs> but she's from the holler. We love her. Y'all, we, I say things weird too. And I'm from South Carolina. So, you know, to each her own. <laughs> but yes, uh, this Paradiso um, series is, it is our fruited variant, pretty much of Athena. The only one that is different is a Tritonia. We, because of the coriander and sea salt, that's where we just kept it as a goza. But Athena, based for lunar vice that we make year round, we do fruit it. And like, what I love so much about the series that we rotate in is like, we, we do not skip out on the fruit whatsoever. So the first one right there in the series, um, the cranberry, raspberry, and cherry is probably one of our most popular ones. People uh, definitely flock to it. Um, Tritonia was a year round brand for us here in Georgia. But we felt that it should be plugged into the series. We felt that there was a home there for it. Uh, now, the next one that is going to come out that I would love to try and coordinate with you both to get your hands on mm. is going to be a new flavor from us. It is going to be watermelon and sea salt. And I'm very, very excited to try that. Yeah. Get on board uh, with watermelon. It's very hard in brewing, I would mm. imagine. Is that mm. right, Asa? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I feel like that's a very tricky fruit to use. And then we're going to throw it completely 360 at the end of the year and give you cocoa bunny, which is a <laughs> coconut milk porter. So, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> not, not part of the Paradiso series. But but... Phenomenal, <clears throat> phenomenal coconut milk porters. Um, we even occasionally do a double version of it. But, uh, but yeah, these are really fun things that uh, we do rotate into the Tennessee market. So please keep an eye out on the area. Uh, usually they do about uh, a quarter, each a quarter uh, kind of time span before we switch it up. Um, but yeah, what you get? So, Mitch. Yeah. What do you think about Tritonia? Because I saw you at mm. Funk Fest, so I know you like yes. this weird stuff. I do, I do. There's only been a there's there was only one Funk Fest at the old Yazzie location where people were able to sort of share a little bit, mm-hmm. and. I don't, I wish I had documented or untapped the ones I had that destroyed me because I don't want to see them ever again, but <laughs> I'll never know. But uh, I love Gozas. Um, I do too. It took me a second to love them because I felt that they were, I even told Rich this on Tuesday. I was like, it was wet dog. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. At first, but it's mm-hmm. like, it grew on me and then they kind of got a lot better. And then now I'm like, oh, I really love these. Now I I'm trying to remember, is a goza the same as a kettle sour? No, yeah, so Athena is the base beer for this. Have y'all had Athena before? <clears throat> Not me. Uh, I'm gonna say no. We're, okay. we'll, we'll add that to your home. Uh, so home you present, can see Athena right all... there. That's one of our core beers. We've been we've been making six packs of that since the beginning. Honestly, the only other sour beer, and I. I'm going to say sour beer because it's sour beers can be lumped. It's, it's just a broad description for uh, a lot of, a lot of different beers that have been made have been lumped into that style. And honestly, it's like, it doesn't really kick you in the jaws. It's not so zippy. It's more acid forward. Um, mm-hmm. is the way I've heard it described and as, I mean, all sour beers are acid forward, but when you think of the word sour, you think of like really like you just ate a lemon and Kinda you're like, like warheads. Remember warheads? Exactly. It's hurting the back yeah. of your so, mouth, right? It's locking your. That's jaw. why I like the 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 descriptor gently tart. So Athena has always been one of our um, uh, core beers. Again, I remember when we opened up, um, at least here in Georgia, uh, Westbrook's Goza was the only other really sour beer that was like all over. I said that to Rich on Tuesday. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's like those are the only ones that were like mass producing it and making it not just bottle format. But Athena is a kettle sour. It is lactobacillus. You should see it on your can. It's also really cool. Across the street from us is a really historic venue called the 40 Watt. Hmm. Bands like Smashing Pumpkins, The Killers, uh, Dashboard Confession, Nirvana, they played there. Um, they have a really like landmark marquee. And if you turn your can around, you'll see in the marquee of the Tritonia can, uh, it says now featuring lactobacillus. And lactobacillus <laughs> is, the, is the bacteria that we pitch to to lower the acidity uh, or lower the pH value, which increases the acidity of the beer. 
And so when they're when they pitch the lactobacillus into the beer, I love it. So Athena is the base of this beer. So the Berliner Weiss, they pitch the lactobacillus when it hits a certain pH value, they boil it off, and it's not too acidic. It's the right amount we want. Tritonia, they added coriander and sea salt to make it a goza, and then we added cucumber and lime to make it a fun goza. So that's the story of uh, how Tritonia came about. And I learned today it's, that I know nothing about sour beers. Yes. <laughs> that's the fun part of this yeah. is the carbonation. So yeah, hell yeah. There's definitely yeah, this yeah, one's. This one, uh, it's just it's super fun. Uh, I kind of like was kicking and screaming like a toddler last year when they didn't know if they wanted to give it to me in Tennessee, and I said, "Please do." And like, yeah. it was really successful. And so mm. they were like, "Hey, you want it again?" I'm like, "Yes, I do." So I was going to ask that is this is this one of those so, beers that's successful in Nashville and sounds like it is? Cucumber, yeah. sea salt. So, Rich, has your uh, has your opinions changed? I, I, still... I it's it, so it's it's an ever evolving process, Michelle. Um, <clears throat> I can say that I poured the entire can into my glass, and this is all I have left. So I feel like I am doing some putting some work into this beer and you guys should do your rewarded. research you're doing your r and i'm it. doing Aza, i'm doing r and d in this beer right now <laughs> no but Probably. i will say when when michelle and i met up and we were exchanging the beers talking about what beers we were going to talk about on the show and she was like hey i've got a pilsner i'm like great she said, i got a couple of ipas i'm like awesome and then she's like and then i have this goza beer and i'm like okay like that's great. I'm excited about that because I can get on board with that. And she was like, "I know, I know. You're, you know, from history. You're just, you're not that big into sours, but try this one out." <laughs> and that's when she ordered it, and I ordered a pilsner. Uh, and then, like Michelle mentioned, the, the 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 beer tender, the server had swapped our beers on accident, and I took a sip, and it just kind of took me back. Not because it was sour, and not because it was off putting, but it was the flavor that I was expecting. And I remember this, right. and I'll I'll stand on this grave, Michelle. And I was like, you know what though. This is not that bad. This is a good beer. This is a, it's an easy drinking beer. It's, um, it's cucumber. It's sea salt for sure. I taste both of those flavor profiles right up front and all throughout the beer. Um, the, the sourness only comes from the lime, which I, to me is more tart than sour. Um, this is a beer that I could get on board with when it's 85, 90 degrees outside and I'm chilling in the pool. I would totally drink one of these beers. So big ups to you yes. guys on this one because this one's fucking awesome. Well, and, you know, my, my whole goal was to rattle you a little bit, Rich, and I'm glad that I won. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yes. And awesome. I, add, I, some tequila. add some tequila. It helps. I want to hear. <laughs> I want a report on that. <laughs> oh, you don't like tequila, Mitch? No, I like it. I like okay. it. But he he was all on board earlier. I so was. I want to hear. I want to hear. And 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 one of the many amazing, awesome things about Michelle, because I've known her for years, um, all the way back to her Wiseacre days, even to the Flying Saucer in Nashville, um, <clears throat> is that Michelle always goes above and beyond whenever she's taking care of people. And that includes today because I got two of every beer that she gave me. So I have <laughs> sorry, one <Mitch>. more <laughs> Tritonia Goza that so I sorry, can Mitch. pair I will with some tequila. better next time. <laughs> hey, he got a bottle. Got I was about to say, I knew you was something that you probably hey, couldn't get. So. Aza, yes. your reputation yes. definitely precedes you because I know you and Mitch got to meet up the other day. And uh, I appreciate you guys it, got man. to talk. So, and he spoke nothing but great things about you. So, <laughs> when Michelle mentioned that you were going to be joining us on the show, super excited. So, I appreciate it, man. Big ups to you guys. Well, Mitch, yeah, what do I you mean, think of this one? Yeah. Dude, uh, it's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. I got to have it during warmth. <laughs> but, yeah, it, for sure. I, I mean, traditionally, like we do see the uptick around now until about the end of summer, then it kind of does trickle down. Um, I do feel like it is a best enjoyed in hot weather for sure. Yes. Type of brew, but because I love it, I'll drink it year round. So. <laughs> I think it would pair well with food. I, I'm trying to think of all the different things I could yeah, pair with. 
Asian, Asian food's awesome. Yes. Yeah. It goes well. It's like white oh. wine, mm -hmm. but it has the botanical value with the cucumber it, mm -hmm. and the lime. It like any kind of seafoodish yes. thing or, or Asian food. I've, I've enjoyed it with. So I've, I've got a, uh, this is a good one to pair with all sorts. Yes. I want, I want that experience next with it. I can't wait because I'm yeah, going to seek gonna, it out. Me and you are going to get some ramen and tropicalia soon. So hell yeah, we're going to figure out what pairs best with it. And then Richie yes. and I will get some like Thai son. <laughs> yeah, Let's fucking go! I'm ready, insane. man. This is awesome. I can't but we've uh, great Thai restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we've been we've been kind of all over the spectrum today. We we started out with a pilsner. By the way, I think I had a I had a different order in which I wanted to enjoy these beers. But going back through the way that we did these, the way Aza recommended, we kind of swap this one and do these two. This was totally the right order to go. So yeah. thank you, thank you to both of you guys for those recommendations. Oh, yeah. Thank y'all for, for for trying them with us. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I know. Absolutely. Start out with Pilsner, Bebo Pilsner, super clean, refreshing <laughs> German style Pilsner. That uh, Mitch nailed it on the head exactly, and he was like, "I popped it open, and then before I knew it, I felt like I was halfway into the beer already." Super correct, accurate, easy drinking. Moved on to the Tropicali IPA. Shout out marvel cinematic studios get the chris hemsworth in there but that was my beer into creature comforts the all around just best tasting ipa it's super easy to drink loads of flavor citra hops galaxy hops it's amazing and then we kind of switched over to stayed in the ipa category but moved to the hazy series um <clears throat> and that one was great that one in in my opinion i'm a big hazy guy so but i appreciate a hazy ipa that's not too juicy um, but it's not dry at the same time because your traditional New England style IPAs are more on the dry side. Um, but this is a hazy IPA that's not over the top juicy as well. So it stayed within that IPA category, um, but definitely kicked up the, the juice hops a little bit. And then Asia turned the, the, the tables on us and said, hey, we're going to go into a, a, a Goza now. But Gozas are growing <laughs> on me, Michelle. Um, <clears throat> I, I appreciate the... I appreciate the flavor profile without being funky sour. So that's a Well, you a know, good last beer. time we talked, Rich, it was I'm growing on pilsters and I'm just here to throw a different wrench in your direction because I think I even said in the previous podcast we did together, your palate's ever evolving. So yeah. mm -hmm. I just want I like to test the boundaries. Yeah. It's definitely uh, saucer trading never left me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take the flying saucer out of the lady. That's for sure, Mitch. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's funny because I almost want to make a meme uh, around a Taylor Swift uh, quote in a song that says, you wouldn't last a moment in the asylum where they raised me with the flying saucer. <laughs> sure. For all Absolutely. my flying saucer yeah. friends. <laughs> so what's the, we, we've been through the gamut today. You guys put us through four awesome, amazing beers. Creature Comfort is, is awesome every time we get a chance to experience it. Is there something coming for Creature Comforts like in the Nashville area? Is there just, is the plan right now just slow expansion into Nashville and the areas? Do you guys plan on doing further distribution? Are you opening up, I mean, maybe opening up tap rooms in the future or is it kind of focused on slow growth right now? This is kind of like you guys' opportunity to plug anything that's creature comforts related into into the space on the internet well rich i have an answer for you for everything that you just asked and it's yes <laughs> should it's, i it's yes but i can't give you a timeline so, should i should i share the curious collection on the website yeah. sure yeah, yeah please yeah. do i, I mean that, that, about, that's Mitch? a really great one right now especially because <laughs> again we are very conscious of how we are growing Mm -hmm. uh, so we are relatively starting to send up uh, these really fun, unique brands. Blake Tyler, uh, oh, Tyler's, excuse me, uh, tires. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <sighs> everyone with weird names, but <laughs> love him. Uh, he is a phenomenal brewer. Uh, you know, got started with a creature with us since day one. He's in charge of this curious collection, so he does a lot of really wonderful collaborations. There might be one in the future with a Nashville brewery that I have lined up. So nice. keep an eye out to hope that that will happen. Uh, you know, we love Carl and Isaiah. I was actually going to mention this. You can see the bottom four you see right there. <laughs> I was going to say like, oh, if y'all are here. 
y'all could have double dry hop trop with Nectron. The Why most would you do that to them? And then oh. the most expensive, it's only the most expensive hop in the market. Oh, oh also, no way. <laughs> and you could also have Curious 18 and Curious 19, which are world-class barrel-aged stouts. One has amber on a wood in it, and the other one has mushrooms and maple wood uh, like world class stuff so. so i'm i'm making a statement right now as someone who the person that manages this <laughs> gentleman right here you have to bring that to them I will. Just rub that in face. well i uh we have a few special like double ipas or uh, yeah the creature x this uh that one last one right there um this was very unique because it literally we have a whole entire other brewing team that like we had to help train over in la but like very creative geniuses too like we're so blessed but our teams came together with their ipa knowledge and created this wonderful ipa that was the first oh, creature shit. on creature collab yep creature uh, on creature collabs but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll, we can bring up a few uh, the, of the special snow tire um ipas that you can't unfortunately find everywhere mm -hmm. um, some of them you will be able to find in tennessee but we'll bring some to y'all as yes. a well, way of saying don't worry rich there, so. i i will hook you up now that i know what you like rich it's, that's my yeah. homies man, right there that's my homies well, i look forward to a uh, creature comforts coast to coast space ghost like thing at some point. <laughs> <laughs> So we might you took it all the way back to Adult Swim, dude. That's wild. So if, you, so if you see that from us, just you get partial credit. Okay. Um, is there a, but yes, you know, our intention is to hopefully maybe put a tap room in Tennessee eventually one of these days. I know that we have actively and still are actively planning that strat strategy as far as our growth plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, we're just focusing on making sure that the quality of our beer is sustainable. You know, our our CEO mm. wants to be around for a hundred years, mm. and how do we do that with proper? Oh, sh sh Deanna, oh, come here, Deanna. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Welcome. Welcome. Hey, man. This is like a thing. No, this yeah. is a podcast. What's up, guys? I've never been on a podcast. Cheers. What are, what, are what, are yeah. what are you drinking? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? What are we talking about here? Good well, beer. Well, yeah, but we're also at the tail end, end. so I so had that's the fun part. Have Bebo their new favorite beer. Uh, there we go. So that's True. always the fun part about being at the brewery is you never know who you're going to run into. That's, that's awesome. right. Sorry for that, but Deanna's Aww, my homegirl. She was the first person to kind of get me the on board with Creature when I first started, so she's she's my homie. But yes, uh, back to what I was saying, that is definitely something that we are actively working on. But again, the freshness and the quality, <clears throat> as long as we can nail that down, <clears throat> you know, the world's... <laughs> <laughs> Nashville, hey Michelle, Sorry. Nashville's ready for you. Um, but at the same time, we've we've seen too many breweries grow so fast that they're not able yeah. to keep up with the quality and production at the same time, mm -hmm. and they either scale back or they ruin their image, and it's it's sums down for them. So definitely yeah. focus on the slow growth and keeping the quality. But whenever you guys are ready, Nashville's mm -hmm. ready for you. Well, you know. Let's just hope it's a little bit more affordable yes. to come to Nashville. Yeah. That's all. That's the only thing that's kind of the hurdle. But that's true. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, we definitely kind of we might want to show some love to our Eastern Tennessee folks. So that actually might be might be where we go. Okay. Again, cannot confirm or deny that it's not. In, in... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's going on here? This um, some who who's I your couldn't girl? resist. Like, <laughs> You go in the barrel room and you find that it leaves. And like, how do you guys not? Like, I got to show you guys what it's all about. <laughs> safety yeah. first. I thought it was safety third. No, freshness <laughs> second, but safety first. <laughs> right. Yep. That sounds this is about why I love Deanna. This is awesome. Um, but Rich, Mitch, it truly is an honor to be back. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I love seeing you guys. Mitch, it was so great to see you at Funk Fest. Yeah. That I just had to give you some crap and be like, when are y'all going to invite me back? Because <laughs> like, um, I'm working for an awesome new brewery that I know that we need to talk about. And mm -hmm. Rich, it was such a pleasure to see you on Tuesday. And I hope that we, I actually live closer to you than you think. So we should meet up at Mr. Brews or something a little bit more often. But I'm down. Um, just love how passionate you both are. 
thank you for what you're doing for the Nashville beer community and Tennessee beer community. And hopefully we have made a new friend with Asa. Yeah. So Mitch, mm-hmm. I promise you, please take him up because he has a storage unit full of rare stuff. I heard about that. And that, that's crazy. <laughs> this is so made him get it. So help him complete that so he can save a little bit of money. <laughs> awesome michelle literally Um, just did my outro for me i couldn't i couldn't do anything better than that that's amazing mitch uh (laughs) beers man fucking beers it was awesome man this is it it's always an honor it's always awesome i'm out of beer i'll cheers with this me too i'll Uh, cheers my empty glass we're we're adults we have to hydrate up between now so hydrating Cheers, Michelle. Yes. Cheers to Asia. Mitch, cheers to you, my brother. And we'll cheers. see you guys on the next episode. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers,